And you've been listening to Governor Greg Abbott giving us an update on the state's response to the COVID-19 crisis. Here's what we've learned. Uh, cosmetology salons will be allowed to reopen this Friday, May 8th. That includes hair salons, barbershops, nail salons, and tanning salons. There are some restrictions, though. There must be one customer per stylist. People can only wait inside a salon if there is social distancing of six feet. Uh, the state is recommending an appointment system only, and stylists are being recommended to wear masks. On May 18th, gyms will be allowed to reopen. They will have to only have 25% capacity for indoor gyms. Those outdoor gyms, you know, different areas that do outdoor workouts, they'll have some different rules to follow, but indoor gyms can only operate at 25% capacity. Showers and locker rooms must remain closed. All equipment must be disinfected after each use and customers are going to have to wear gloves that cover their full hands and fingers any personal yoga mats brought into those gyms are going to have to be disinfected before and after each use also allowed to reopen on May 18th are non-essential manufacturing plants. They too will have to operate at 25% occupancy. The state is recommending a staggered workforce so that people are not all coming into those plants at the same time. Once inside the plants, employees will have to operate at six feet of separation and if that is not possible. They must use separators, such as those plexiglass uh, separators that we see when we go to HEB. Office buildings will also be allowed to open on May 18th with occupancy limits, and it can be the greater of five employees or 25% occupancy, whichever is greater, but they have to maintain social distancing practices. The governor also saying today that they are still working on strategies to be able to reopen bars. Some big news for the class of 2020. Graduation ceremonies are going to be permitted, but with certain restraints. Uh, the state is going to allow hybrid ceremonies. This would be the type of situation where a student will come in one at a time. They'll have maybe a short video and their photo taken. That video, all those videos can then be edited together and ran as a ceremony. They are also allowing vehicle ceremonies. So that's something like a drive-in where there's a graduation ceremony. Outdoor graduation ceremonies will also be permitted as long as there is social distancing. But all of these districts are having to be uh, and get approval for these ceremonies through that, the TEA. Now, today the governor also wanted to make some clarifications and modifications to his executive orders. He talked about funerals, memorials, burials, and now weddings. He says that these things can be happen can happen, but they must be treated as church services with limited seating arrangements and at-risk populations, people who are 65 years old or older or have uh, compromised immune systems are encouraged to participate remotely. When it comes to wedding receptions, they too are allowed, but they must operate the same as restaurants. That means the venues cannot have more than a 25% occupancy rate, no more than six people may be seated at a table, and people must practice social distancing. Distancing. The governor also clarified some things when it comes to river rafting, beaches, lakes, and rivers. If you go to any of those locations, you have to follow the same guidelines as if you were in a park. And that means social distancing practices must be followed. The maximum number of people allowed in a group at one time is five. And face masks are being recommended, but they are not mandatory. He also clarified some things when it comes to restaurants. The governor says outdoor seating areas must follow the same social distancing rules as indoor seating areas. So that means occupancy, the distance between the tables, the number of people allowed at the tables. Now, the governor also talked about why his reasoning into allowing some of these openings to happen, and that really comes down to the numbers. So he says the number of people now that have been tested in Texas is more than 427,000, and yet the number of people testing positive is 33,000. And as of right now, the state of Texas has 15,672 active 
cases. The number of people in the hospital with COVID-19 complications, 1,888, and 906 Texans have died. But take a look at this number, and that's the number of people who have recovered, 16,791. The governor pointing out that there are now more people who have recovered from COVID-19 than active cases of the virus. He also shared more of the data about how he's gauging this decision. He says he spoke with Vice President Mike Pence and White House doctors just yesterday, and testing will continue to increase in Texas. The federal government intends to send more testing supplies to Texas. Their goal is to test 2% of each state's population each month. Now, in addition to that, the CDC is sending 750,000 testing swabs to Texas by June 1st. And the governor says the state has been working to test people in areas that have a high likelihood of people contracting the virus. That includes nursing homes and jails. And the governor says that he's also looking at the rate of people testing positive compared to the total number of people that have been tested. And he calls that the positivity rate. So when we look at that positivity rate on April the 20th, it was 7.2%, meaning 7.2% of all the people who took a COVID-19 test were actually positive for the virus. As of today, that number has dropped to 4.65%. He says it will be a red flag if that rate increases to 10% and stays at 10% for more than one day. Now, really important to talk about here, the governor acknowledged that as more things start to reopen, we need to be prepared for flare-ups, for a surge in cases. And so because of that, he has commissioned a surge response team. They will come up with mitigation strategies and these teams will be deployed to areas seeing a spike in cases. That includes senior centers, meatpacking plants, and jails. He also said today that Dr. Burks, this is a White House doctor, has recommended that states consider starting school earlier uh, for the next school year and then have a longer than normal winter break so that they could be prepared for an increase of flu cases or if we continue to see COVID-19 in the fall, children would have more time out of school. But uh, one of the key messages that he as well as Dr. Heller said we're saying today is that Texans still have the ability to slow the spread. Now is not the time to let up on those social distancing and mitigation efforts. He says that Texas will be able to open up even more or have to go to greater containment. It's all going to depend on what people are doing and if they're practicing those social distancing recommendations. We're going to have much more on what the governor said for you tonight on KVU News at 5 and 6 as well as on KVU.com. As for now, we'll return you to your regular programming.